After efforting the surveillance, it was determined that the subject had vacated the premises. What's wrong with that? It makes perfect sense to me. Of course it makes sense to you. You wrote it. But efforting is not a word. What's not a word? Efforting. I'm with her. Miles, what do you say? Well, from a purely grammatical point of view, no, efforting is not a word, but neither technically is bling bling. But due to common usage, that's going in the next edition of numerous dictionaries, so who's to say? In that case, I believe that I'm to say, and I say it is. Heads up, everyone. We have an overseas assignment opportunity, 30 to 60 days, starting a week from Monday. High priority operation. Well, if it's just east of the 80th parallel and south of the 24th meridian, I volunteer. I believe that would be the general area of the Caribbean. Very dangerous part of the world. I'm afraid this one's not exactly the tropics, but it is a warm weather climate. Middle East. Eight weeks of fun-filled artifact research? <laughs> I think not. Bottom line, they need a body. So think about it and get back to me if you're interested. Thomas, we have a missing persons case that's got your name written all over it. The missing persons, deaf, a student from Gallaudet. We went out to lunch with Katie two days ago. It was the last time we saw her. She was supposed to be here last night for my birthday party, but she never showed up. What time is your party? 7.30, and she's always on time. Uh, she says it's unlike her. She's a straight-A student, dependable, responsible. She's been that way since she was a little girl. Mr. and Mrs. Harmon, I know this is a touchy subject, but can you think of any reason why Katie might want to disappear? What do you mean, want to? Was she unhappy about anything? 19 can be a tough age. Girls can be very emotional, even unpredictable. She says they're close. If something was going on, they'd know about it. Do you know anyone who might be angry at Katie? Um, a boyfriend, a friend, maybe a teacher? No, our daughter couldn't make an enemy if she tried, and she doesn't have a boyfriend. Uh, not every case is the same. And nobody is better at doing this than we are. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders That'll be all right Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes who I am I am a Missing girl. No ransom note, no real leads. Which means every move counts. Luce, I want you to get on the media and put Katie's face out there. We're also gonna need phone lines set up for tips. Done. Dee, I want you and Bobby to interview the father's work staff. What about us? We are going back to college. Hey, Luce, wait up. I need the inside scoop on this Mideast thing. The real story. 
This morning you didn't want anything to do with this. Now why the interest? Well, it's life without new experiences. What do you know? Nothing for sure, but I heard Kelsey and Major Crimes is going after it. Kiss up Kelsey? The biggest career opportunist in the Bureau. He'd arrest his own mother to get his cloven hoof another rung up the ladder. If he's going after it, it's got to be good. Maybe, but you have your own sources. Why do you need me? Well, yours are better when it comes to the inside office scoop. Glad you finally realized that. So, get it and report back to me. Would you like fries with that? Oh, and, uh, Luce, we don't need to broadcast this all over the building. Sorry, I wasn't more helpful. Not a problem. I appreciate your time. This is so awful. Hey, Diddy. Why don't you just call a break? At the time, I thought he was just venting. It's about the fourth time Marv's been passed over for a promotion. This time, I think it sort of got to him. What exactly did Marv say? That he was going to do something so Mr. Harmon would never forget him again. Considering what's happened to Mr. Harmon's daughter, I thought you guys should know about it. I was mad. I might have said some things. It's not the first time somebody spouted off about their boss, but I'd never hurt anybody. I'm going to do something so Mr. Harmon won't ever forget me again. Seems a little bit more than spouting off to me. Could go so far as calling it a threat. I had nothing to do with that girl's disappearance. Mind telling us where you were on Monday? I don't mind telling you what I did for the last year if you want to know. I got nothing to hide. Why don't her staff have? I'm getting a little lost here. She said Katie was acting a little strange, nervous, and distracted. Uh, when was the last time you saw Katie? Uh, she was here with Katie on the day of her disappearance. Katie got a page and left. Who was the page from? She says it was a boy from one of Katie's workshops where hearing and deaf students study together. Lance, uh, she doesn't know his last name. Katie was going to meet with him at the campus coffee house. What does that mean? Um, that's a sign for disappeared. Nobody's seen Katie since. Back from recon, Captain? Greetings, everyone. Don't get up. Randy! What brings you to the belly of the beast? Stickies. Those little yellow squares of paper with the little strips of adhesive backing used for jotting down quick little notes. We know what they are. What we're missing is your point. Well, my inventory indicates this section has used 27% more than its budgeted allotment. You budget stickies? We budget everything. Consider this a friendly warning. Cut back voluntarily on your unbridled use or face involuntary rationing. Good day. It's a sticky situation. I'd like to sticky him to a dartboard. I heard that, Liam. That is just one more reason taking a break from the moribund daily bureaucratic grind is appealing. Hmm? Huh? I might go to the Middle East just to get away from that weasel. Speaking of which, as I was saying, I got the skinny on the posting. Not here. Talk to me. You do know you need professional mental health. What did you hear? You're right. They're being very hush-hush with the details, which in and of itself tells me this might be pretty high level. But I did manage to squeeze out a few interesting tidbits. Well? The word I got was Iraq, and you'll be staying in one of the presidential palaces. What else? I heard the letter CIA. Yes! That fits in perfectly with what I heard. And put that together with another little whisper I heard, Pakistan, and what I heard has got to be right. It does? Oh, come on. Iraq, Pakistan, cleverly obscured references to artifact analysis. Why would they need a special unit for that? Unless the artifacts they're talking about are actually the big kahunas, the terrorist masterminds. 
This is an engraved invitation to the big dance of history, and all I have to do is slit open that golden envelope and show up on time in my Kevlar tuxedo. It's official. You finally lost it. Why the resume? Why the big push for this posting? Bottom line, I think this unit needs to be represented. Not just by uh, someone thrown into the breach to satisfy the call for a body, but by an agent who will attack the job with vigor and gusto. With all due modesty, I believe I am that agent. Consider yourself nominated. Yes. Yeah, I heard about Katie. That's pretty scary. She was supposed to meet someone here at 5.30 yesterday. Someone by the name of Lath. Yeah, I saw both of them. They're sitting right over there. Two non-fat, double-shot Vente Mochas. You know Lance? I slung Frappuccinos with a guy for six months. Name's Lance Rose. Lance Rose? Yeah. Uh, do you remember seeing anything in particular that day? It was pretty hard to miss them, that's for sure. Uh, they were fighting. Inside. That gestures speak a lot louder than words, right? It was heated. Did you see what they were saying? Yeah, some of it. Uh, Katie was saying that she wasn't interested in dating exclusively, that kind of thing. Lance wasn't taking it too well. It doesn't surprise me, though. What do you mean? Lance is one of these uh, poetry and flowers kind of guys. Real sensitive and quiet. But he hooks up with a girl and it's like, oh, she had it. What was that? Uh, obsessive. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have an address on Lance, would you? We keep all the employee stuff on file. Good. Okay, we'll be right there. How fast can you get that address for me? Right away. <sighs> that was Tara. The harm has just got a ransom note. losing him. We move. She could be killed if he's got an accomplice. You're calm. You've lost the visual. Take him. I just saw her name on the news. I thought it was a way for me to make some money. I'm not the guy. I'd swear it. What do you think? I hate to say it, but I believe him. If you were right, we've just spent eight hours following a dead end. His alibi didn't check out? Just the opposite. Seems he spent the last two weeks in a lockdown drug rehab. Might be a greedy little junkie, but I think we can be quite sure that he's not our kidnapper. We uh, talked for about 20 minutes at the coffee house, and then she left. The boyfriend? Back to suspect number one. Always first in our hearts. I understand how these things can happen. Why don't you just tell me what you did to her? Nothing. Look, all I ever did to Katie was... was love her. You don't understand. I haven't, I haven't been able to eat or sleep. I've been going completely insane since I found out she's been missing. Do you realize you could be looking at the death penalty if we find a body and you don't cooperate? can't be hearing this. Jack. Lance, I understand how complicated relationships can be. But you were the last person to see Katie. Nine times out of ten, that's the person who did it. Tell us where she is and we'll help you. 
I didn't do this. If Katie's dead, I might as well die too. What do you think? A killer? I don't know. I don't reckon we can rule him out just yet. My gut says no. Unfortunately, I agree. Tara, any leads from the media? We're working what we've got, but nothing so far. What about the relay operators that assisted Katie in her phone calls? Talked to two, nothing unusual. But the third one handled a 45-minute call placed a day before the disappearance. A cell phone number in Richmond. Did you get the address? The cell phone was prepaid. No way to trace it. Haven't been able to talk to the operator either. She's apparently on a ride the rim bicycle tour in Hawaii. You know, around the top of the volcanoes. No cell phone. And our luck keeps on rolling. Stay on her. The second I reach out and touch her, the second you'll know. Good. Bobby, did you and Dee get anything on Mr. Harmon's disgruntled employee? Mm. Corroborated alibi. Dinner with his wife and friends and then bowling all night. That leaves a boyfriend. Or somebody not on our radar. Burning up in your geography? Uh, no, just uh, deleting small files. All oh, right. I can't tell you how much disk space I've got tied up in topography maps of the Persian Gulf. Miles, mm -hmm. about that assignment. What about it? Well, I heard you put in for it. <laughs> Where did you hear that? Oh, I don't know. Around. Well, then I would suggest that you consult a better class of informant, because it would be the proverbial snowstorm in the Sahara before I would put in for that dubious-sounding billet. Oh, well, I guess you wouldn't care to know what else I've heard about it. What? What have you heard? Well, just out of curiosity. Just that it might not be all that it's cracked up to be. Well, I didn't know that it had cracked up to be anything. The details are sketchy, to say the least. Which could mean that it's a really great assignment, and if they'd advertise it, there'd be a lineup around the block. Or could be just the opposite, in which case all this secrecy could be because if anybody knew what they were really in for, they would run the other way like a chook being chased by a weasel. Hey, uh, chook's a chicken for you uh, Northern Hemisphere types. Wait, uh, who told you all this? Oh, now, Miles, you wouldn't want to trust intel from uh, one of my unreliable sources, even if you did just get back from Iraq. Who? Who did you talk to? Mike Jarvis. Jarvis, just the man I want to see. I heard you were just in Baghdad. Well, I didn't get this savage town by sitting on the base of the Potomac, pal. Why? I'm just curious. Ah, uh, don't tell me. You bought it there too, didn't you? Bought into what? Oh, come on, Leland. The priority assignment. They were trying to sell that lemon to our side of the building two months ago. I was stupid enough to buy it without kicking the tires first. Yep, now they're just slapping some fresh lipstick on that old pig and they're trotting her out for a whole new batch of suckers. Beyond your fascinating talent for mixed metaphors, what can you tell me about it? Well, for beginners, the uh, artifacts are documents. There's reams of them and they're all in Arabic. So you sit there for hours on end with a translator and you make piles. One pile for the docs that might be pertinent and one for the docs that aren't. And the iron pile is about the size of North Dakota. And, uh, oh, did I mention that this all happens in a tin shack about the size of Minnie Me shower stall? But, 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 but what about the accommodations? I heard something about a presidential palace. Oh, oh you'll be staying there all right. With well, the neglected dimensions, that is the bombed out presidential palace. So you'll have your choice of the executive crater or the guest crater. And that one comes complete with his own view of the latrine. My advice to you is, if you haven't booked your flight yet, run the other way. Fast. <laughs> Leland, come on in. I was just about to call you. Listen, Chief, about that Iraq thing. Oh, you can stop campaigning. You got it. What? I have to pull some serious strings. Ace had a couple of very eager beavers, but it's a done deal. You're in. Now, I don't mind telling you. I had to use up a, a favor or two to get it for you. Now you owe me. Uh, well, that's uh, great. Well, there's no need to thank me, but you better start packing. They told me they want you to move out very soon. They'll notify us.
41 hours since Katie disappeared and none of these feel right. I don't know where to go next. Got a report from SOG. Lovesick boyfriend looks about as innocent as he tells us he is. If he does know anything, he is an amazing actor. I don't know if this will help, but it's new. That was the relay operator. She remembers that 45 minute conversation Katie had the day before she disappeared. The operator said it's not every day she gets to be a part of a mother-daughter reunion. Excuse me? Did you say mother-daughter reunion? I did. But Katie's mother is deaf. They don't communicate by relay. Yes, but Katie's biological mother is hearing. Katie's adopted? The operator said it was very emotional for both of them, finding each other after 19 years. informed us Katie was adopted. Right before Katie disappeared, she made contact with her birth mother. Oh, we don't know anything for sure, but it could explain why Katie disappeared. She might be with her biological mother, or she might be somewhere alone, just trying to process everything that's going on in her life. We don't know, but frankly, it does give us some hope. Do you have any information on her birth path? No, we never have, even in the beginning. We thought it was best that way. Maybe you could give us the name of the adoption agency. That might be a start. Yeah, yeah, we have that. Yeah, I'm back, handsome. Who's the biggest hunk of love I ever saw? <laughs> oh, we still have to get fully computerized around here. I had to dig through two miles of hard copy. 19 years ago was pre-Bill Gates for us. But you found a record of the Harmon's daughter. Yep. It says right here, uh, baby girl born April 10th. Biological mother's name was Ruth Iverson. Here it is. It looks like about 12 years ago, Ruth Iverson began looking for her daughter. She entered her information on a website that connects birth mothers with the children they gave up for adoption. And it looks like Katie put her name in the state of Maryland's adoption information database within the last month. So they connect after all these years, and the next thing you know... Into thin air. We've got to find Ruth Iverson. Congratulations on your all expenses paid trip to Baghdad. We all just want to say that we're going to miss you. We will. <sighs> Fine, enjoy your moment of mirth. I can't go over to that infernal wasteland and be a glorified librarian for two months. I'll go mad. I think the dementia's already set in. Have Garrett get you out of it. I can't. He pulled strings to get me in. He's not going to take kindly to me now asking him to pull the same strings to get me out. Well, then go to the person in charge of the deployment. Well, who would that be? Technically, that would be the rapid deployment team. That means I'd have to talk to Grimes. I did a favor for him once. He owes me. This is perfect. Maybe not quite. Why not? There's been a little administrative shuffle. RDT's deployment assignments are now being handled by office services. Oh, not Randy. So maybe you'll hit Baghdad in a cool spell. And what part of internal audit requisition forms and triplicate did you not understand? Leland, what do you want? Uh, nothing. Just uh, out for my afternoon constitutional. <laughs> Keeps me sharp. There has to be another way.
Hello? I'll be right with you. Hello, Miles. Arlene? What are you doing here? This is my new job. But uh, I don't understand. You're a temp rotor. That was just while I went to nursing school. I graduated and my supervisor here liked me so much he hired me on as the new nurse. That would be Randy. Yeah. Isn't he great? Oh. He said it was meant to be. You know, I had all my security clearances, my evaluations were all positive, and uh, here I am. <laughs> Could you just die? You have no idea. Now, what brings you here? A back ailment? Yes. Um, and uh, I haven't been letting on, but the pain is excruciating. I have this overseas posting in Iraq, and my fear is that I'll be so knotted up, I won't be able to perform my duties to the best of my abilities. Hmm. Well, you're in luck. I do happen to have training in deep tissue massage. Now, it's an aggressive approach, but it just might be what you need to get you through this long flight. <laughs> no, no! My, you seem to have quite a range of motion there. Maybe that quick turn served as a sort of lumbar adjustment. Okay. Because of our pre-existing and uh, cordial relationship, I'm going to level with you, Arlene. This posting is an exercise in clerical futility. I am much more valuable to the cause of peace and freedom here, defending the homeland than in some tin shack in the desert. But unlike you, I don't enjoy a cozy relationship with Randy, despite what I'm sure is a deep and abiding underlying mutual respect, we somehow long ago got off on the wrong foot personally, and uh, it's clouded our ability to interact ever since. Frankly, I need your help. What kind of help? I need a medical excuse as to why I can't go. You want me to falsify a report? No, not falsify, just... Enhance? I'm afraid I couldn't be party to that. Not even for old times' sake? I'm sure you understand. Oh my goodness, would you look at this? What? You're overdue for your Hep B booster. My booster? This is hardly the time or the place. Oh, contraire, mon frere. This is the perfect opportunity. You're lucky I caught this. I can't have you participating in a big overseas mission without proper immunization. But I really... Now you just lower those snazzy gabardine trousers of yours and we'll make this as quick and relatively painless as we can. This is it, 1403. Nobody's picked up the mail for a while. Bobby, see? That's not paint. What? Looks like somebody was trying to make up for lost time. It's me. There's a trail of blood in the garage. Anybody? They found hundreds of letters to Katie in the room. Um, dating back to just a few months after she was born. What kind of letters? The same thing over and over. How once she found Katie, they start over. How Katie would always be a baby. Are you sure Katie was being held at the house? Yeah. We found her prints all over the bedroom. 
It was bolted from the outside. No, she never had a chance of getting out. Jack, Sue. They found a body just off Interstate 97. Katie? Her biological mother. The whole thing makes no sense. Figure that Ruth lures Katie into that bizarro house, and then there's some sort of struggle. And somehow it's the mom that gets dead. So this sweet 19-year-old kid kills Ruth, and then buries her body by the interstate to cover her tracks? Sounds like a bad horror flick. Check this. We just ID'd another set of prints back from the house. They match up to one Lawrence Francis Carlton. Resume's pretty impressive, everything from B&E to spousal abuse by a mom's boyfriend. Tara, get everything you can on this guy. Put pictures out, see if anybody's seen him. Hey, it's Dennis Harmon. The kidnapper made contact. Do as you're told and she won't get hurt. Memorial Park, 10 o'clock tonight. Pay phone by the Cannon statue. Answer it and I'll give you instructions from there. Have the money and no hero business or the girl is dead. It was in our mail slot this morning. She was holding today's paper. We know she's still alive. And we also know she's likely in the area. Analyze that recording to see if there's anything on there that tells us where. We need to pull a response team together, Stat. Talk choke points. I'm in the van covering north, across from the statue on Van Buren. Miles? Uh, on foot, east access by Cumberland. I'm west in the taxi at Stratton and Division. Jogging path, putting in a bit of late night road work in case he makes a break for the woods. We have a plane ready to go. SOG is in place if he rabbits. A SWAT takes it as long as he stays within the containment zone. If he breaks the perimeter, he's ours. Uh, Tara, wait. Can you back that up? That's good. Let it play. Now, freeze it. Zoom in on the hands. Oh my gosh. She made an L handshake and tapped it twice. It could be the sign for lazy. With her other hand, it looks like she was putting her hair behind her ear. It's the sign for horse. Lazy horse? She's telling us where she is? Lazy horse. Some kind of uh, equestrian area. Horse stables, maybe. Maryland, Virginia, there's horse country all around us. Guys, there's a lazy horse in just outside of Falls Church. This is the front desk. I'm sorry to bother you, but we've had a little problem with your credit card not going through. Could you bring it down here so we could run it again? He hung up. Looks like he's going to be needing room service. Honey, you didn't do anything wrong. Thank you. Thank you, 
God. No, Dennis was right. God brought her home. Leland, I wondered how long it would take before you came slinking around. Randy, I am an agent. We do not slink. We walk in and forthrightly speak our minds. Well, don't bother. The answer is no. And Arlene says hi. We're professionals, Randy. Let's not make this about us. The fact is, I don't think I'm the right man for this Middle East assignment. You and every other agent who gets a posting they have second thoughts about. Tom Flaherty from Major Crimes was in here earlier today complaining about the temporary assignment he got. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. I just had a thought, Leland. To show you I really am the wonderful guy people around here say that I am, I uh, have a proposition for you. What's that? If you can get Flaherty to trade you assignments, I won't stand in the way. You both get what you want, I still have two warm bodies to fill my order. Well, that's very reasonable of you, Randy. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to Flaherty, and uh, maybe this can become a win, win, win. <laughs> Now I know why Levi's happy to see you. Good work this week. Thanks. What? <clears throat> I ever tell you that I'm glad you're here? I'm not sure, did you? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll get around to it one of these days. Um, I think you have some visitors. Katie says she's here to thank us. Uh, she's thinking about getting into law enforcement. Yeah. We'll tell her the pay stinks, but you can't beat the perks. And speaking of that, we just made a Krispy Kreme run. We're all about the donuts at the FBI.
Party. Hey, Miles. What's going on? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase here, Tom. I uh, hear you've got a temp posting you're not exactly thrilled with. That's no secret. Well, um, maybe we can uh, help each other out here. Uh, I take your assignment, you take mine. You're up for that thing in Baghdad, right? That's the one. Interesting idea. I hear that might be something big. Why do you want to get rid of it? Uh, allergies. Oh, they've been killing me lately. Uh, I'm afraid if I, I go down there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze up a version of Desert Storm that put the original to shame. <laughs> Tell you the truth, my wife and I aren't getting along so good right now. Oh. A little distance might not be a bad thing. And this job I'm supposed to do involves a lot of writing. Not my favorite pastime. Writing? Ah, oh, I don't mind writing. Uh, I, sometimes I write in my spare time. It's practically a hobby, so we have a deal. Looking awfully chipper for a man who's destined for the desert. Desert? Oh, you must have mistaken me for some other agent. One who's not nearly so clever and resourceful. You got Randy to let you out? No, but make no mistake, I am out. I traded that loser of an assignment for one that's not only stateside, it's right here in DC. What are you gonna be doing? Writing training manuals, which I can do in my sleep. I'll be sitting in air-conditioned comfort, injecting some literacy into this bureaucracy, while Flaherty swelters in a tin oven. I almost feel sorry for the poor sod. Well, I'll feel better knowing you're on the job, saving the world from grammatical errors. <laughs> Leaving so soon, Leland. Randy! Well, I'd love to stay and chat, but uh, I have to go home and unpack. I guess you didn't hear. Hear what? Well, the assignment you traded Flaherty for is the reorganization inter-office project. Yes, that's correct. Which just happens to be mine. You'll be reporting directly to me for the next 30 days. Guess you didn't bother to uncover that little detail. You were so eager to switch places with Flaherty. Wait, I thought that... that... Thinking is something you won't be required to do under my watch because I'll be telling you what to do. Uh, we'll be starting with a training manual on proper office etiquette, a guide for employee interaction. Oh, we'll have thrilling chapters on dress, grooming, uh, proper shoe cleaning techniques. And I like to get an early start, so please plan to report in by 7.30 sharp. And don't forget to turn on the coffee maker. Why, oh, you manipulating, dissembling little tyrant. Now, Miles, that wasn't very courteous. We'd like to apologize for our colleague's outburst. It was harsh and uncalled for. Uh, what he meant to say was, how do you like your coffee? Light cream, no sugar. See you tomorrow, Leland. Yes. <laughs> Miles, since you'll be getting here early anyway, maybe you could get my coffee too. Take it with a spoonful of sugar. Cream and sugar, thanks, Mike. Oh, and black for me, but not too strong. Yeah. Latte with black. Is skim milk for me. I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He says no milk. He's lactose intolerant. 